in today's episode of Homestead How. I purchase an acetylene torch. I try to learn how to use it and I try to fix our plow which was horribly broken. Oh Get the fire extinguisher. And let's see what we have here. Stand upright. Now I can't read it. Get the fire extinguisher. As we do in every episode of Homestead How, we share some of our favorite homestead photos of the week at the end of the video, so be sure to watch till the end. You don't want to miss this episode. Carrie here from Homestead How. Welcome to our homestead. In today's video, I majorly messed up our new plow. This thing is completely bent. I'll show you a little close-up picture of it. There's also a pin that goes into this hole up here, and I don't think the pin fully seated. And I went around the corner, and the plow got caught on the edge, and the whole thing ripped off, and the entire plow was hanging by this one bracket, and it completely bent it. I wish I got that on video, but I didn't, but half the plow was connected to the bracket, it bent over to the side, it took me about an hour and a half to free it, and it's so crooked that the top bracket will not go in again. I'm going to get some acetylene and oxygen and get a torch so that I can get this sucker heated up much hotter than I could with propane. The issue is, I've never used an acetylene torch before. Acetylene is very dangerous, I think it gets up to like 6,000 degrees. I'm hoping to do kind of a buy one get one free versus spending a thousand dollars just to fix this and that's it. Maybe I can spend four or five hundred dollars, get a new tool out of it that I'll need for the homestead and then also fix this. Who knows? Watch the video with us and see if I can actually fix this thing. I'll show you a close up of it. It is bent really bad and it's a huge piece of metal and I've never done this before. And the more I'm thinking about it, what are the odds I'm going to purchase an acetylene torch that I've never used before and then be able to heat this up and actually bend it and get it straight so that it's fixed. Probably pretty low, so it should be an exciting video. Let's get to the store and see if we can purchase this portable torch kit. After watching several reviews and reading up about it, I ended up purchasing one from Harbor Freight. And the cost was $330. So I purchased the torch, and the tricky part is they obviously don't come filled with acetylene and oxygen. You have to take them to a welding shop or somewhere else. Our farm and fleet will actually exchange these and Tractor Supply does too, but they only exchange if they're the thoroughbred tanks. And I paid about $40 to fill up the acetylene. I think it was like 20 or 30 to fill up the oxygen, so it is expensive. Acetylene is extremely dangerous, so I don't recommend anyone doing this. This is not a lesson. Um, this is probably how not to do it. Lefty, tighty, ready, loosey. But I did learn a few things along the way. One thing is the acetylene screws into the left instead of the right, and that's a safety feature so you don't accidentally uh, switch up the oxygen with the acetylene. These fittings are also designed to just screw right in. You don't need any Teflon or pipe dope. In fact, you're not supposed to use any of that per the directions. There's two gauges on each tank. The one on the right basically shows the capacity and what's left in the tank, and the one on the left shows your flow, and you can use this little regulator to adjust the flow. All right, I got this thing all put together yesterday. I gave it 24 hours because I didn't want to play around with it. I wanted to get a fresh brain because I was pretty tired yesterday. All right, I'm gonna try this. I got my goggles, safety gloves. I know I have an aluminum one of these somewhere and I can't find it. Unfortunately, I have this plastic one, but that's how far off I am. That's got to come over that far. So I'm going to eyeball it to get close. And it doesn't have to be precise down to the millimeter because there's room in the thing that it goes into. But I want to get it pretty darn close to 90 degrees off of this. So I'm going to heat it up right here. I got my big pipe wrench. I'm going to put it on and I'm going to try to bend it back. You can see right here where it's bent. I'm going to try to heat it up right in that spot there. Thank you. 
So here I'm trying to get a neutral flame. I learned this by watching a bunch of YouTube videos. However, it's hard to learn on a YouTube video because the exposure on most cameras don't show what a neutral flame actually looks like. So my goal is to get this red hot, cherry red, and then I should be able to bend it. Like that, it should be like roaring like that. I think I got the tip too close and it popped, but I turned the gas off and it was hot enough to bend and surprisingly it bent back perfectly. And we're at almost a perfect 90 here on the bottom piece. It's got a little whoop whoop, but it's a lot straighter. Now I gotta get this top piece. Can you see that on the camera? This is gonna be the tricky part because all this plastic's around and I should probably take all this off. So this is actually a stainless steel cookie sheet. A friend of ours gave us a bunch of these. They're oversized and they don't fit in our oven, so I use them around the garage for miscellaneous projects. I know stainless steel has a really high melting point because I googled it, so I'm hoping this should work fine, and I'm just trying to protect this little bit of rubber along the bottom that's kind of close. Watching all these YouTube videos, I was told these glasses, you could see like when it gets cherry red and Jen was like, it looks pretty red and it didn't look red at all in my glasses. So I took the glasses off and took a peek and it was ready to go. So I may have been able to bend that maybe 30 seconds earlier than what I did before, but I got a good heat shield here. So I'm not going to melt all my plastic. <laughs> and let's see what we have here. Stand upright. Well, now I can't read it. Done. We are so close with this thing. I got the bottom one perfect and then the top one disaster struck even though I had my heat shield here. This stainless steel sheet I burnt right through it and the rubber from the bottom of the bumper was touching this and that lit on fire. We're always honest on our channel. I think most channels would edit that part out and not show them being an idiot lighting the car on fire. Not us. I'm going to show you the whole video. I'll just put this over here with the rest of the fire. <laughs> we burned through it, burned some of it. I had a fire extinguisher so it went out. Maybe kind of dramatic, but whatever. It's just some of this rubber from the bottom of the bumper melted. Now some of you may say, well why don't you just pull a piece off and do it? I was thinking that. I wasn't trying to be lazy and just leave it on there. My thinking was, I can slam it and beat the hell out of it. If I take this off, I don't have a vise big enough to stick a four inch bracket in to hold on to it while I'm trying to pound it. But it's just too close to there, so I'm gonna pull it off now. I'm hoping I can set it up like this so it's vertical, heat it up, and then pound down on it. I haven't used my air tools much, so this would be a good opportunity. the shape I'm hoping I can keep it like this heat it up and then pound down with the sledgehammer this hook was bent like this one so I've bent it back 
obviously this is the one that needs to go down. Just to increase my odds, I'm putting my propane torch on for about 10 minutes, do a little preheat on it. Hopefully that'll speed things up. Now watching this back after the fact, I can tell my flame is just not right. I think I needed more oxygen on it at this point. So that first one went smoothly and now I'm regressing a little bit here on the second one. So I like to MacGyver things together here on the homestead. I had a jack and some chain and I was thinking I may be able to bend this with the jack. I tried that. It actually did bend a little bit, but not enough. And since I had the proper tools, I figured why not try both? So I'm hooking the jack up, I'm gonna heat it up, and I'm putting some tension, kind of preloading this thing. Here's a quick replay, it's pretty cool. You can see this thing bend right into place perfectly from the tension from the jack. Well, almost perfectly. It needs one or two more whacks with the hammer and then it'll be perfect. It looks a little deceiving from this angle, but it's actually perfect, almost a perfect 90 right here. And I'm gonna do a test fit in a second. It's freaking perfect. Yes! What? See, these two pins got to engage, and I think that's what screwed up last time. So as the saying goes, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. So I'm going to take this opportunity to clean this up, get some of the surface rust off, and repaint it. It's done. It's nice and straight. There's a little bit of a whoop in it, but it's almost perfect. And I have to hurry because we have guests coming to our Airbnb rental tonight. And there's a ton of snow on the driveway and they have a little car and they're not gonna be able to get in. I'm gonna see if I can fit this back on the truck and then I'm gonna try to put it on the plow and I'm gonna show you if it all works or not and if we're gonna be able to plow this thing before our guests come later tonight. Here's the aftermath of my work from before. And here's all the nuts and bolts I need to use to attach that back on to there. Just hand tighten those just to be extra safe. No more! No more! No more! Stop! Locked it! Success! Flip it! Thank goodness, I'm so happy I was able to fix that thing. The main thing is that pin on the side was not going in all the way. I have to triple check that in the future. You hear it click, it locks in, you move it all around, it seems like it's fine, but 
that pin has to be in there. It wasn't, I caught an edge and it ripped that whole side off. So completely my fault, user error. I gotta be more careful next time. Should have a little checklist each time I use the thing. It's supposed to snow like crazy and we got a guest coming, so. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. It's always fun getting stuff fixed on the homestead and as an added bonus, getting to purchase some new tools that we'll be able to use now and in the future. As always, at the end of every video, we show some of our favorite photographs from our homestead this week. We've done a lot of camping, outdoor, in the snow. We've done a lot of hiking. We got some really good pictures with this new camera. So stay tuned and watch those and please be sure to subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching.